We're Cheryl and Paul Shard, hosts of the Distant Shores Sailing Adventure TV series. This time we save a boat from sinking in Panama, evaluate a boat monitoring system called Barnacle, and load Distant Shores 3 onto a ship for transport to her new owners. These jungle walks in the morning are so great. The howler monkeys make such a huge noise and they're just cute little guys like this. Okay, so today's project, I've been working on the Barnacle installation, which is a monitoring and boat security system. It's pretty cool. It's this little box here. Basically, the central hub of the system, which includes a uh, GPS receiver, various sensors to detect battery voltage. It's also got senders to tell the humidity and the temperature, which it would probably record as about 32 in here right now. <laughs> uh, we've also got uh, detectors to tell motion and if the boat has been hit, if there's an impact center, it can do the humidity, connects to a camera. Uh, what I've got it hooked up to right now is battery, so it's sensing the battery level down here. And it has a GPS antenna that's connected up also so it can tell the position. It's a really neat little installation. It was quite straightforward to install. Comes in a small box with this, uh, this little white unit. And then I just mounted the GPS, which is just up in here also and the camera which is up there. Very neat install. As a monitoring system, it seems incredible. Uh, included right in the box is the SIM card. That's a world connected SIM. So as soon as we plugged it in and created an account on the Barnacle website, signal is being sent through the cell system. I didn't have to do anything about that. If we go to some new country, we'll show up, it'll talk to the new cell system, sign on and send these little updates every few hours to uh, tell what the voltage is and how everything's doing on board. Uh, highly recommended. This system would have helped the boat docked beside us, whose owner has flown home to the Netherlands. Uh, yes, uh, Shelter Bay Marina, it's distant shores out here beside the yacht Different. And uh, I think they're having a problem. I think perhaps they're taking on water over. We got up this morning and we can see that they're down on their lines by around perhaps six inches. Partly because you see there's no line around the water line anymore. You'd expect to see a little bit of dirt and just sort of frickin' sinking, man. There's like two feet of water in the bilge. Marina staff open the boat and bring an emergency pump. So it looks like the power's off, so we haven't got the bilge pumps running. Sure, what's going on here? Great, it's all in Dutch. Lens pump, Z water pump. That must be sea water pump, but I don't know if it's bilge. The problem is uh, uh, the power for the pump. Yeah. It's off. Low battery. Low battery. So there's no charging in the battery? Exactly. Now the batteries are underwater probably. Exactly. The whole electrical system, half of it is underwater, I guess. No the working. rain was super heavy, the, the electric no power working. wasn't working. The alarm, the no. And because the power was off, the, the alarm power. didn't come on either, or we would have heard the alarm. The thing is the water tastes fresh, so you know they haven't got any seawater. It's only water mm -hmm. that's come in from, from the fresh, which has to be from the rain, because your water was turned off outside, right? That is not correct. Over 12,000 litres, 3,000 gallons of water have come in, and it just couldn't all have come from rain in just one evening. The secret lies in the differing density of salt and fresh water. Turns out I should have literally dug a little deeper for the answer here. The fresh water dripping in from the rain formed a layer that stayed separate from the salt water, 
which was leaking in from a broken fitting below the water line. I tasted the water on the top of a bilge two feet deep. The heavier salt water kept lifting the freshwater layer up, and with the calm conditions in the marina, the two masses of water stayed apart. After an hour, the bilge pump has dumped most of the water, but after another hour of trying to trace systems, I'm still not confident I can fix the problem. The owner isn't in the country, and eventually the decision is taken to haul out the boat and sort the problem in the boatyard. Incidentally, we will also be hauling out, as Distant Shores needs a few final jobs done ashore in preparation for shipping her off to her new owners. It's the last morning on the boat before she gets loaded on the ship, apparently. We've been watching on the AIS tracker and uh, the Shipplebrook Star is coming just off about 15 or 20 miles off the coast of Panama. So they should be arriving in the harbor in an hour or so. And then we'll just see what time they've got scheduled to pick us up. This has been an incredibly long process. I tell you, um, the company we contracted to do this, they signed a contract saying they'd have a ship in the end of April, then they shifted it a little bit to the 1st of May, and you'd think we would have been fine, but then when the ship came, they just uh, decided not, they decided to bump us off the ship altogether, so uh, that was really unfortunate and meant a big delay for two months. So definitely, if you're going to do this kind of uh, booking, uh, make a plan and just check what the contract says about if they miss the deadlines and just try to get a real upfront view of whether or not they really are likely to make the deadlines or not, or if it's just something that they uh, hope to do to get you signed up. So definitely buyer beware with this yacht transport business, but uh, it's gonna be exciting to see it loaded on today. And uh, we'll take the cameras along and see if we can film uh, Distant Shores 3 going up in the air. She'll be put down on the Chippelbrook Star and then shipped off to her new owners in Seattle. And uh, we're off to the Netherlands, so last minute packing up today. Still got a little bit of stuff to do. Gotta say, our time here in Panama has been absolutely great. I must say, just totally fabulous. We have loved our stay here, this little corner of Panama, and they've really looked after us here and made sure that the time, make the best of the COVID time and be able to get out and talk to people and everything, so. <laughs> love about Shelter Bay. We've got an evening get-together, we're all outdoors. Even during the COVID times you can get together and enjoy a little bit of a drink in the evening and uh, just get together with other sailors. Very exciting, we are getting underway at last. We just got the call to bring the boat out just in time. It's been a gorgeous day and there's this freaking huge, huge black cloud coming over. Cologne town, that's where we're headed actually. All right, maneuvering out of this berth for the last time, incredibly, after two months of waiting. So we're gonna go and meet the ship. Yeah, we have been waiting for two months for this to happen, and now all of a sudden it seems to be coming very quickly, but really thrilled to uh, experiment and try this yacht transport stuff. So we're just heading over toward the port over here and it looks like the Chippelbrook Star has gone right into the port. We thought that they were going to anchor out. It's a busy time like crazy. Cheryl's talking to Enrique on the phone. We've got about 15 minutes to go I guess until we get into the area by the Chippelbrook Star and uh, we should be loading. We're supposed to be one of the first loading 
and we'll be over there shortly. All right, we seem to have a little bit of a cross current here with 75,000 horsepower throwing us around. That's one of the largest of the container ships and you see them in here a lot. We have got another couple minutes. There's the Chippelbrook Star up ahead and uh, one of our other boats is loading is uh, waiting in that area. The Chippelbrook Star is 660 feet long and has been chartered by our yacht transport company who has crammed the deck with yachts bound for the U.S. West Coast. Chippelbrook is a heavy lift class ship and can load herself with her large deck mounted cranes rated for 300 tons. This ship loaded most of these yachts in Florida all bound for the Pacific Coast and they left room for the five of us loading here in Panama. That's very cool. It's like they lift with both of the slings are aft of the mast, instead of having one in front of the mast like you'd normal with the travel hoist. But of course we have to remove the backstay, so I'm just gonna get ready and take the backstay off next. Okay guys, so this is probably it. We're, they're just finishing loading, you can see in the background, they're just loading the uh, catamaran that they just lifted. So they'll be loading us, and then they're not letting us stay around. So as soon as basically the slings get on, and before they lift her, then they're going to uh, kick us off. So we've got the boat ready to turn it off, turn everything off, and uh, we'll be back to the marina again. Uh, turn the AIS off and leave on just those uh, four big bilge pumps and that's it. Everybody's having way too much fun here today. All right. Divers in the water already. We need to get out of here. I think we've got everything tied off. All the doors have latched. Okay. Everything's looking good down here. All the latches are closed. Too exciting. We have to leave the key in the door so the customs can check the boat. Pretty exciting. We are out of here, Cher. We're climbing off. Yep. The last time we just didn't show her Yeah, last thanks time. All the yeah, thanks everyone. Yeah, gosh. We've been waiting all this time. Hey, she's in the air already. Oh my goodness. All right, it's already higher than I've ever seen our boat ever. Oh now we can read Chippo Broke in the star. Look at that, there she is, 20 feet up off the water. Oh my God. Never seen that before. 25 feet off the water, look at that, look at that. There's the water. She's 30 feet up in the air. Griping Grimmies, that is serious, look at that. Yeah. Is there a boat up there? Yes, there's a boat way up there. Now's like the wrong time to remember that you left your wallet on board or something. <laughs> what a day for our departure, man. This looks like the heaviest rain we've seen all year so yeah. far. It's Panama or Shelter Bay's way of crying for you guys living, you know? <laughs> With the downpour, we got word that there were roads flooding and we could be held up. So kindly, Wanho is taking us to Panama City and it's going to be an adventure. That adventure starts as we fly from Panama to the Netherlands to begin the project to build Distant Shores 4. Join us next time as we look at options for the ultimate tough aluminum expedition sailboat. Please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this episode and subscribe to follow on as we go through the custom build process.